Have you ever used a smart thermostat, Bluetooth speakers, a vacuum robot like Roomba? Or you took a ride on an electric scooter that unlocked with your phone? Or have you monitored anything else with your phone? If so, then you're already familiar with the Internet of Things, or IoT. Because all of these devices are IoT devices. Imagine you can know the state of everything. The room temperature in any corner of your house, air quality and humidity level in every room, water pressure in the pipes, the light and sound intensities, your heart rate and blood pressure, and the location of any devices. Being able to monitor all of these and more and doing something with this information is IoT. IoT device is any device that has at least one sensor, for example, a temperature sensor, camera, or a location sensor. It has to communicate this information to a user device through some network. There are different networks that can be used, such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The problem with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is that they only work for short distances. For Bluetooth, the maximum range is between 10 to 400 meters, depending on the setup. And for Wi-Fi, it's between 10 to 1,000 meters. Another option is cellular network. However, cellular network is provided by central companies and it's expensive. Seeing the problems with these options, in 2013, Sean Fanning, Amir Halim, and Sean Carey launched a decentralized network, a network where IoT devices can efficiently communicate information to the end user a network that would not be provided by central companies like TELUS, AT&T, Verizon, Orange, but by regular people like you and me. And this decentralized network is called Helium. So how does it work? You get a Helium hotspot and place it at home. Helium hotspot looks like a regular router for your Wi-Fi, but instead of Wi-Fi, it uses a long Fi that utilizes license-free low radio frequencies which can reach hundreds of kilometers and maximize battery life for compatible devices. This low frequency signal is free from laws or regulations in many countries, so people can support the network globally. To learn more about LongFi, I encourage you to read the Helium blog article. See the description. With a low frequency signal, the data transfer speed is not designed for things like phone or video calls, web surfing or watching videos on your phone or computer but it is perfect for transmitting small packets of data, which is just what's needed for IoT devices. Helium Network is already supporting many devices. One example is Lime Electric Scooter, and I think many of you are familiar with it. Now, when Helium Hotspot is set up, it can receive and send encrypted messages from, to, and between any IoT devices that support long fight in its range. Let's use the Lime Scooter as an example. Lime Scooter sends a packet with its location coordinates to a hotspot. Based on the unique identifier on the blockchain, the hotspot knows exactly which company this device belongs to and the destination for the packet. The hotspot then sends a part of the packet to the company's data center via the internet. If the company wants the full packet with the data, the company needs to destroy some of the data credits that they initially purchased in the name of the hotspot. I will explain data credits a bit later, but right now you can think of them as a gas fee. After that, the hotspot sends all of the data to the destination, and that's how you know where every scooter is located, and you can get the closest one. This whole process is automatic and happens in milliseconds. The Helium hotspot needs next to no energy, yet it needs to be connected to the internet so that it can transfer messages to the company's data centers and also to synchronize and have the most up-to-date blockchain. How about rewards and payments, you ask me? To make things simple, there is h &T, a Helium native cryptocurrency, and there are data credits. h &T is what hotspots get rewarded in for servicing the network. Data credits are another currency dedicated to paying transaction fees, like gas fees. Data credits are fixed to a USD dollar, where one dollar 
buys you 100,000 data credits. And the only way to get data credits is by burning an equivalent dollar amount of HNT. When a transaction on the Helium network is completed, the data credits are destroyed, which in the end reduces the total circulating supply of HNT, and this increases the value of HNT in the long run. There is another financial incentive to get a hotspot and support the network. It's called the Proof of Coverage Protocol. Basically, it's an algorithm that verifies a hotspot location and coverage. The protocol involves three players, challenger, challengee, and witnesses. The challenger sends a challenge packet to a challengee to verify its location and connection. If the challengee is active, it then transmits the packet. When it transmits, the hotspots in proximity hear and witness it. These witness hotspots then report this event to the blockchain and the challenge is now confirmed. In the end, all of the participants get rewarded in HNT. You can check the distribution percentage on the official Helium page. Overall, the hotspots get paid just for being connected, which is called proof of coverage, and for actually servicing and transferring the data on the network. Right now, Larger amount of rewards are allocated for hotspots participating in proof of coverage. When you set up your Helium hotspot, you automatically participate in it. As the network grows, rewards distribution will change over time. The rewards for proof of coverage will decrease and rewards for transferring data will increase. Let me tell you about tokenomics. Helium has a maximum supply of 223 million HNT. At the launch, none of HNT was pre-mined. Founders raised funds for development by selling Helium security tokens to investors between 2014 and 2020. Holders of these security tokens are eligible to receive a certain percentage of all mining rewards, which will decrease over time. The first HNT was mined in July 2019. The rate of mining was 5 million HNT per month, and halving is every two years. So, current rate of mining is 2.5 million HNT per month. Thus, the inflation rate will decrease rapidly, as you can see in this chart. You can think of inflation model somewhat similar to Bitcoin. There is also deflationary pressure on HNT, because all transactions on the Helium network are paid in data credits, which are created by burning HNT. Now, here is something very interesting. A tiny percentage of these burnt HNT is recycled to be given as a reward to the network providers. This is called net emissions. This protocol will ensure hotspots are rewarded even after HNT supply is reached, which will happen roughly in 50 years. It will incentivize people to support the network after the last HNT is mined. In summary, Helium is a decentralized network that can be hosted by people like you and me rather than central corporations. It uses a low-frequency signal, long phi, to transfer data to, from, and between supported IoT devices. And that's how you know where your dog is, or SM packages, or where is the closest electrical scooter. It gives businesses a new opportunity to build new IoT devices and integrate them with a cheap and secure Helium network. In the future, the developers hope this network can support 5G, so people can use Helium network for their phone internet. But that's a topic for a later video. If you got excited about Helium, check my tutorials on how to set up your Helium wallet with Ledger. I also want to know what you think of Helium, so leave a comment below.